video, cinema, and art are being replaced by AI in the modern era. And this may seem like a really good thing. And I don't think so for some people. Although you can make a logo five seconds now and that task used to take around like maybe an hour for a person or shorter, I don't know. But it didn't take as long to create something that could make more creative art than a human can. Our initial impressions of AI was that it could take over all of the jobs that could be automated. This was a very unexpected turn for what we thought would happen. And this is especially dangerous for artists. I'm a high schooler and I'm in my last year of high school. Throughout the journey in my school, I've learned many skills and I'm not good at almost, I'm not good at any of them. But what I have done is learned the path I took and how effective it was and what I've learned in the end. And today I wanna share how to make an effective story. So the first thing I would say is understand a purpose for art. Whenever you create an art piece or a film or even anything, a sculpture too, there should be a purpose behind. Now for film, most of the time it is going to be entertainment and some of the time there will be information that could be passed along. However, in film, there are mainly a couple of things that you need to know so that your audience actually understands the purpose of what they're watching. The purpose of your film or your art that you create and present to everyone should resolve with them. It should make sense to why this is something they should watch. For instance, if you were to make a kid watch a calculus informative video about integrals. That kid would probably not enjoy it. You can even argue that high schoolers won't like the video and they're just doing it for the sake of passing their tests, but that's besides the point. You see, having a purpose in your art makes it seem like there's actually some value behind what you're creating and there should be an intention to what you're creating. The more purposeful your art can become, the more your audience will start to like the content you make. And this doesn't need to be YouTube specifically. This can be a, a huge film. This can be a TV show. In both of those scenarios, it is entertainment. And there are many ways you can deal with entertainment. And that's another video, but you should have a purpose for what you create. The second thing is the main idea, the plot per se. In, in video, there's a lot to do with how your story develops from beginning to end. And this doesn't need to be specifically for entertainment as well. If you're, let's say, doing an informative video, your goal is to make a video that has a topic and develops that topic from a very basic point of view to a very complex point of view. For instance, you could say that two apples plus an apple is three apples. And although that's a very basic example of that, it does the job. What you want to get at is from going to two apples and one apple is three in total to something more of 13 plus two and you develop that in your story and that's what I call a plot. It doesn't need to be a story actually. Specifically entertain in entertainment purposes a story would be a better use of the word but it's whatever. 
The third thing that you should consider doing is storyboarding. Now, with storyboarding, with storyboarding, you're going to get a ton of ideas. See, when you're making a film, a video, anything, you're going to have a lot of imagery in your head. Your brain has almost 30,000 thoughts a day. And if you are thinking to yourself that you can remember most of the scenes you do throughout a week's worth of time, I mean, that sounds kind of absurd. I mean, you have a brain and it has memory and stuff like a storage thing. And what you can do is instead of using brain power to remember all the things that you can uh, visualize, you should just write them down, jot them down, draw them down, do something with them so that you don't really need to remember them. Sometimes they can be vague, right? Sometimes your ideas may not be presented as well as you think it might have. And to get there is a whole another challenge, but a storyboard will really help you understand how to piece together your plot. It also eliminates the idea that your thoughts are not going to get wasted and will be used because that's a challenge that I had. Sometimes in the past, I would usually think of ideas, multiple ideas in scenes and just not write them down. Now I draw them, today I draw them and I'm currently working on a dystopia and I have to, I drew like, I don't know, around a hundred panels because I would have forgotten almost half of them if I didn't draw them and it's really effective. The fourth thing is the most common and that's editing. Editing is by far one of the most important parts of film. Probably because the film wouldn't really exist. I mean, you can make a film that doesn't require editing, but it's all going to be in one shot and it's not going to be very good. However, if you want to make your film go to the next level, well not next level, but if you want it to look a little more appealing than just a raw footage of, you know, just stuff, then editing is a great place to go. I mean, it's one of the most important parts of it too, so. <sighs> this is what makes a video editing so unique. When you're looking at a video and you see that an hour long video into like 10 minutes and make it really, really good. Yeah, that would like be very beneficial. Someone would rather watch 10 minutes worth of really good content versus an hour long worth, an hour worth of, I don't know, raw footage. In video editing, specifically for video itself, although you can tweak a ton of other stuff, you change the mood of the film Change, like playing around with the scenes, playing around with exposure, and there's a whole mess that you could work with, and specifically color. When you're editing, and a ton of the stuff that you're working with, like raw footage and stuff, maybe images, the things you work with are all dependent on tone and mood. And that's how you make your purpose in art. How you portray that. If you were to ask someone across your street waving at you, that would be really weird. Um, if you were to ask, let's say, your mom or your dad or any siblings or like anyone in your family, then they would probably say that they have a different idea of what you're working with than you think. And that's kind of the beauty of humans itself, right? I mean, we can't, we can't vividly share creativity. It's really hard to do that. So creativity is expressed within you and you can only express your own creativity. Wow. The next one is sound design. Just like how we edited our films in terms of video, you can do that with sound to make things more real. For instance, if you have a door slamming and that door did not make a sound, 
and instead you overlaid a door slamming effect onto that door that it makes you believe that that door is slamming and then the music this portion of editing is very important to set a tone and mood but also more importantly a feeling when you see music play in movies and everything there usually happens to be something very emotionally attaching like there is a scene that is happening that has feelings and wants you to have those feelings because that's why the music's there for instance if i were to have a film of just thunder and lightning you know in the sky and i put a very sad theme to it it would make you feel pretty sad or in general you'd know that something melancholy is happening However, if I put some very, very jolly music with lightning, either you'd be really confused or extremely confused. When you're working with music, a lot of the times there are transitions that also happen. Sometimes you can see transitions happening because of minor chords and major chords. And that's the part which really sets apart film and other films i mean their music for some films is really good and what i mean by really good i mean by like it really depicts what the author is trying to say this is a really hard part of film the music production and in fact almost all parts like shooting and stuff those are all really hard but when it comes down to portraying a feeling that is difficult Also, when you're storyboarding, try to have some raw footage of some of your scenes. It's so much better if you were to just start filming when you're done with the first four scenes of your storyboard to get an understanding of what you're trying to go for. See, when you're filming, that's when you get the most amount of ideas. I mean, you can get ideas from storyboarding, of course, but when you're filming, that's when it really hits. Like, you get so many ideas from just filming, and then you want to change these tiny things in sets, in the background, in the lighting, and then exposure. And then all of a sudden, you created a whole different scene t to like almost a whole different like mood and feeling that you want to create when you're first you know making the first few scenes and it doesn't need to be perfect right these are all test runs if you're making your final scenes and you're making all of these adjustments when you're making the storyboard that's a pretty big problem when the storyboard decides to change or you decide to change the storyboard the reason why many movie productors finish their storyboard is so that they can effectively make any scene they want go first in their recording. And sometimes it may be as simple as just like James Cameron saying two people meet on a boat sailing across the Atlantic and the boat comes down. You might have heard it. Not only do film producers know the entire plot before they even start recording they also jump around they might start on scene 22 and then the end scene and then scene 3 the reason why is because they want to save money and time when you're filming time is your biggest competitor and it sucks I mean, that's why many of my projects never finish and if your projects never finished that is completely normal. Like, that is fine. That is, in fact, it's not normal for a project to not be completed. Just like any artist. Over time, you gain experience from those unfinished works and start to make something new, something bigger. And for beginners, this is a really big part. And 
when you're beginning a film or video, you don't want to go large scale. I did that same thing. And although I learned a lot from it, I've also never finished that project. And it also made me very demoralized. Just remember that this will be a long process. Video is a long process. So don't give up. Anyways, thank you for your time and have a great day.